Come on, lift your hands up. God is saying, I want my people to enter in and start possessing their promise. I want them to start eating the fruit of the things that I've promised to them. I don't want them just to dream about it. I want them to step in and I want them to receive it. Amen. In 1 Samuel chapter 30, and I'm just going to go quickly with these, but because each one of these are a message in themselves. 1 Samuel chapter 30, David had been off fighting the Philistines and he was on a three-day journey back to his base in Ziklag. And if you remember the story, he came back and on the third day, it says, on the third day, he arrived in Ziklag and found out the enemy had robbed his family, the wives, the children, all the possessions, all the crops, all the flocks, everything they owned, the enemy had carried away. And it was such a time of grief, it was such a time of tragedy, it was such a time of crisis That David's men wanted to stone him. But David pressed into God. He said, bring me the ephod. That was what they used to listen to the voice of God. And as he listened to the voice of God, God gave him a word that I think is our word for this year. Pursue, overtake, and recover all. Say it with me. Pursue, overtake, and recover all. Say it again with me. Pursue, overtake, recover all. Come on, whatever it is the enemies try to be robbing and stealing from you, maybe it's your marriage, maybe it's your children, maybe it's your health, maybe it's your finances, maybe it's your hope for the future. Come on, this is a year that we got to shake off whatever's gone on in the last season and we got to rise up and we got to have this mentality, pursue, overtake, and recover all. Let me tell you something, kind of funny story. On January the 1st, after Brielle had been through what she'd been through and Pastor Tiffany and Jason were on their way home, our oldest daughter, Crystal, was here and um, she uh, took the kids all out for a walk. And uh, she... she, uh, JJ was doing something and she said, JJ, don't, don't do that. Things haven't been going well for us lately. You don't want to, you know, don't, don't mess with things. Things haven't been going well for us lately. And Brielle says to her, oh, Aunt Crystal, that was so us last year. But that is not us this year. We are not those people anymore. Can we get that mentality? We are not those people anymore. We are not those people that go through all this stuff that we've been through. That was so last year. For some of you, you might have to say, that was so yesterday. Because that's what it was for Brielle. It was a yesterday. She said, it is so last year. Some of you just need to shake off the last season. Come on. And we got to get that mentality that we've got to pursue, overtake, and recover all. Say it again with me. Pursue, overtake, and recover all. Now, Esther chapter 5 verse 1. This was when Esther, it says, on the third day, Esther goes before the king. That's when he stretches out his scepter and gives her favor. What was it for? Not just favor for herself, but favor to destroy the curse. Favor to turn the decree of the enemy back on his own head. Ezra 6, 15, that's the day that they finish the building of the temple. How many understand that there's times that God brings you into a finishing anointing? He says that last season is done. How many believe him for a finishing anointing in your life? Amen. And the last one I just want to say is, and there's so many, so many others that aren't on the screen, is in John chapter 2, we see Jesus' first miracle. And it was, you guessed it, on the third day of the wedding in Cana. See, when Jesus died and rose again on the third day, he was fulfilling a biblical pattern. In every single one of these situations, you see God coming down and turning things around. Jesus was saying, listen, I am the big turnaround. I am the redeemer. I am the one that breaks the curse. I'm the one that brings victory. I'm the one that brings triumph out of tragedy. I'm the one that brings, uh, uh, that brings things forth, that begins to turn things around. And we just got to get that mentality for this year. Amen? The Lord is our shepherd. We shall not want. He makes us lie down in green pastures. He leads us beside the still waters. He restores our soul. See, even God from heaven is thundering and saying, yes, I'm emphasizing that last point. Now, let me just wrap this up by just finishing Psalms 23, and I'm not going to belabor this, but let me say this. 
It goes on then to say, he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He leads me in paths of righteousness for my name's sake. When we walk on God's paths of righteousness, there's actually very little room for self. So let me tell you who your biggest enemy is. I am more afraid of myself than I am of the devil. I, I saw something on Facebook the other day and it said, make sure that you are not the weapon that is formed against you. <laughs> I went, okay. And then I had to remember it said, but no weapon formed against me will prosper, even if I'm the one forming it myself. I bind myself in Jesus' name. That's right. Listen. The third day talks about freedom. And paths of righteousness at times speak of times that we just got to repent. We got to repent. We got to get it right. We want to get delivered, but we got to repent to get delivered. And if we'll repent, we can walk on the paths of righteousness this year. I think it's interesting that in Genesis chapter 40, when, G, when uh, Joseph had interpreted the dream of the butler and the baker, it said on the third day, they were released from prison. When Joseph's brothers were in prison, it says on the third day, Joseph let them out of prison. So I think what we have to realize is that this is a time of freedom, of healing, and of deliverance, and of coming out of any prison state, any bondage, anything that the enemies tried to put upon you. And I was talking to somebody that, um, has dealt with and studied addiction programs. And, and she said to me that it's very interesting because they always say that the third day, the third week, or the third month is always the most challenging. Because they said in the, the process of recovery from addiction, it's the third day, the third week, or the third month, which is a, a, a milestone, but it's also a point at which people decide, do I want to go forward in freedom or do I want to go back into bondage? Sila, we got to make that decision. Lift up your hands. God wants to give you freedom. God wants to give you freedom. I, I skipped a, a very important slide, didn't I, with a decree on it. Let's, let's stand up. I've got a decree for the third day. Let's lift up our hands and let's say this decree together. This is my third day. Say it again. This is my third day. I receive the anointing of resurrection life. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in me and is quickening my mortal body right now in Jesus' name. I am part of the revived, restored, favor-filled, miracle-working, ready-for-battle, third-day church. I carry resurrection power, and I will possess my promised land and eat the fruit of it in 2023. Give the Lord a shout for that. Amen.